Tonight's presentation, although edited for YouTube, contains imagery and subject matter some may find disturbing. While our program is educational, we still feel that viewer discretion is advised. Always going to a better place now, guys. Smash the like button on this video. Every like on this video is a prayer for Mac Miller, his friends, or his family. That's right. That is a clip of J Station trying to clickbait for likes by using someone else's death. Now, YouTube is a place I consider to be my home, my main source of entertainment, and right now, it's also my main source of income. So when I see people like this, it just brings my piss to a boil, and honestly, I want to call some of it out. Not because I want to make a bunch of drama and want you guys to go attack these people, but I want to try to instill some kind of change. While I know nothing I really say here is going to change these people, but maybe it can instill a change in standard for some of the people who watch this video. Maybe get them to think more critically about the content that they're watching. Maybe sometimes a spam of videos is not as good as one amazing, well-researched one. And maybe, just maybe, if someone is stealing their scripts or writing or editing from other people, Maybe they don't deserve your view to begin with. I'm your host, That Creepy Reading, and I implore you to sit back, relax, turn down the lights, and welcome to my dungeon as I present nine YouTubers that just need to stop. No matter how big or small you are, it does not take much to abuse your platform. Kavira Games was a gaming speedrunner that only had like 31,000 subscribers. However, this is after his previous account got banned, and we will get into that later. After getting called out by YouTuber and Twitch streamer GFC for cheating in Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories by altering the drop rates of certain cards, Kavira Games opted to copyright strike his channel for showing roughly 20 seconds of footage. If cheating to make yourself look like an elite pro gamer wasn't pathetic enough, he also removed the main source of income for another smaller content creator. Before all this happened, he used to run a much larger channel by the same name. In fact, he was roughly the same size Creepy currently is. One day while live streaming, a female fan of his made a presence known. Since this was one of the first live streams of his, she actually joined live. Cavera, according to YouTube, proceeded to sexually harass her, get banned, then blame the quote, removal of his channel, unquote, on his ex-girlfriend, who did not have the platform to defend herself. This was also a lie since, well, looking at his channel now, YouTube has a different story. After making the new channel, he not only started selling merch that made fun of the original victim of the abuse, he also tattooed her face on his arm. <sighs> So here we have a channel that not only actively perpetuates targeted harassment against individuals with no platform to speak of, but also lashes out against anyone who would dare to call him out on his shitty behavior by wielding the YouTube copyright system like a sledgehammer. He also actively shows nudity on his streams, which of course is against YouTube's terms of service. This is one of the few channels on this list that we think should actually be banned, as him just being on the platform hurts everyone here. Also before this entry ends, We'd like to give a shout out to Easy Escape for bringing this guy to light. This video is much more in depth than this one, and he'll be linked down below if you like gaming and live streams. So a quick update, Easy Escape's original video, which has over 2 million views, was taken down by Kavera Games via a privacy complaint during the scripting of this video. Then YouTube actually responded, then banned Kavera Games, who already has a third channel. Okay, before I start, there are some things I said last time on this channel, on the last list video we did, that I do regret saying. And for some of those things I said, I do apologize for that. Now, I don't usually like calling out YouTubers much these days, because I've had a bit of a change of heart since then. But I have no problem making an exception every now and then. And I can't think of anyone more deserving 
than Jay Station. He is a Canadian YouTuber mostly known for his 3am challenges, which include really strange titles like We Kissed, ordering gay potion from dark web at 3am, and Scary, do not enter the cartoon world dimension at 3am, cartoon potion. I can already tell that this guy is going to be a piece of work. The latter of which involves JayStation, basically, is that he seems to have some enjoyment tricking kids into thinking paranormal stuff like alternate worlds existing. But hey, maybe alternate worlds do exist. But JayStation put me off believing that. The video itself is loud, boring, and in the end, nothing really happens. The former is a bit more insidious as it mostly just involves JayStation making fun of homosexual stereotypes. Bro, I do not want to kiss Jay. Yeah. I do not want to kiss. Why do you want to kiss me? You're freaking me out, Jay. Come here, baby. Come on. Call me, baby. We're not, we're not like that. Your sister. Oh my god, how long does this freaking last, bro? Wait, come here. Bro, don't freaking touch me. Oh, oh my god. Hey! Ah! Ah! Then we have the 24 hour overnight challenges which mostly consist of him essentially breaking into buildings and squatting in them which of course is illegal and also promotes youtube to demonetize every single one of them finally we also get his stolen gameplay and ouija board clickbait videos out of everything i've said so far this is without a shadow of a doubt the worst of jstation the most recent controversy Jason has been a part of concerns Daniel Desmond the Mofa, better known as Etika, who committed suicide in June of 2019. By the way, if you are struggling with dark thoughts or in any shape or form, please consider using the suicide hotline or looking for some form of professional help. Anyway, in this situation, Jay Station did what he was becoming famous for, cashing in on the death of someone famous, followed up with a clickbaited as fuck Ouija board challenge video. Only a few hours after Etika was announced dead, Jay Station, the eager opportunist that he is, couldn't wait and made one of his shitty 3am challenge videos on Etika. This video has received the most hate and backlash on his channel, earning over 300,000 dislikes within 24 hours. In the video, JayStation does not do the Ouija board challenge at 3am as normal. Instead, he talks about almost dying a week ago at the time of creating the video, making it into a self-indulgent, arrogant rant. JayStation also talks about how YouTubers claim they were friends with Etika, but he replies, saying that these YouTubers are lying. Yeah, way to use someone's tragic death to throw shade. JayStation has done this with more than just Etika, but also with Mac Miller, who was a popular American rapper. On the day he was announced dead, he made a 3am challenge, and in the video, he begs for likes by saying, I know he's going to a better place now, guys. Smash the like button on this video. Every like on this video is a prayer for Mac Miller, his friends, or his family. Which is blatant emotional manipulation at full steam. Then he did it again with XXXTentacion. XXXTentacion, Ouija board challenge at 3 a.m. Gone wrong. <laughs> the irony kills me here. The fact that he puts gone wrong in the title and then everything goes wrong for him and he wonders why. Jason has since apologized for creating the Ouija board challenge videos that feature both the rappers, but not for clickbaiting on Etika. So basically, sorry, but not sorry. One day after uploading the video, JayStation changed the video's title to None of you YouTubers donated yet. Shame. And changed his own comment on the video claiming to have donated more money to the charity, choice of Etika's mum, and suicide is an issue that he deeply cares about. One dislike equals two prayers for Etika. He had also uploaded yet another video titled, I Need to Say This, where he claims Etika changed his life and that his death hit him so hard and that he felt a connection with this whole story. Oh, shut up. It's just fucking lies. The video has amassed over 17,000 dislikes in 7 hours with over 
142,000 views. The day after, he changed the title of the video. JayStation changed the title once again to I'm sorry for what I did, RIP Etika. Incidentally, to date, he got 2.3 million views off of X and 2.7 million views off of Etika. Every video he made about Etika, Mac Miller and X still remains on his channel to this very day and still generates ad revenue and traffic to Jason's channel. If he was really sorry, he would actually remove the videos. The guy is like a vulture. He feasts on the remains of someone who's no longer around, all for his own benefit. And then when someone calls him out, then we're in the wrong then, because he threw a donation in. When in reality, he's made more off of the death of others than what he's donated. And telling us we're shitty people because of something he brought upon himself. How about he donates all the money he made from those videos and deletes them? Every single penny and not a penny less. That would be a better apology, but he won't do that, will he? No, instead he's going to go along with this bullshit damage control, where he would try to appear at least somewhat human in front of the camera, when in reality, JayStation is a channel willing to do anything and everything to try and make a quick buck on this platform. Anything but be anywhere remotely ethical. Now, I don't say this and I don't mean to throw insults around, but if I were to describe JayStation in one word, the guy is a total rat. Mundane Matt, now known as Matt Jarbo, is another YouTube channel focused on politics, mostly in the sphere of anti-SJW politics. Since Gamergate was one of the only focuses of his channel back when he got popular, with countless videos about Gamergate and Anita Sarkeesian, it's no wonder why he failed to branch out, leaving his channel to die off. It was somewhere around this point when a lot of his original followers just begun to drift away, and as 2015 rolled around, no one really cared about Gamergate as it was old news. Matt was slowly drifting into the pit of obscurity that many old YouTubers find themselves in as their 15 minutes of fame begin to tick to its end. Some people took notice of mundane Matt's desperate grasp for fame, like when he started to cry while unboxing his 100k plaque. Old videos of his began to surface, including old skits from back in 2012, which was not really tasteful and also contained words that I actually cannot repeat here. As soon as they were found, they were moved by Matt himself. As a joke, Ethan Ralph of the Ralph Retort podcast brought up some of these videos, and then almost immediately the video got taken down, flagged by an unknown source for hate speech, of course. So then the search for the false flagger began, and once asked, Matt was quickly to deny any allegations. Whenever videos on this topic would be uploaded, they would be removed very quickly due to YouTube not really caring. Simply put, if they included the clip where Mundane Matt says a word I cannot repeat here, it would be taken down because YouTube would detect the word and it was flagged. Almost always being flagged for hate speech or harassment and every single time, Matt would have a new excuse for how it couldn't be him. Matt then proposed an interesting idea. The person behind all of the flags was an elite troll, a man who hated him so much that he was consistently false flagging every single video critical of Monday and Matt, and then removing them so that Matt would get all the blame. Who thought your first kiss would be JoJo? But it was I, Monday and Matt. Did we mention this had gone on for over a year and a half? This was a running joke for months. Matt was never to blame. Eventually, Matt was invited to an episode of the Killstream podcast with the likes of Ralph Retort, Mr. Mediker, and special guest Keemstar. During the live stream, he was accused of being a hypocrite, to which he predictably was denying everything. However, the moment of truth had came when one of the members of the Killstream podcast reminded Matt that there was a way to check your flag history and all that he would need to do is clear his name by screen sharing his screen and showing the flag history. After many coaxing and many minutes wasted, here's what happened.
five. Let's see it. All right, hold on. My pants are off. Oh Jesus Christ! All right, Matt, fine. what there are you doing? Head. How's it taking this long? Look at all those tabs. I have a lot of tabs open, but. I have is that reporting. But nothing, but nothing. Now wait a minute. Nothing on that. Oh, yeah, that's just, that's that's just, what the that's fuck? Just, so <laughs> I have been in a, not the best, <laughs> in a, not the best place mentally. And, now wait a minute, oh, Matt. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> Matt. No. <laughs> He was caught red-handed. His career started when someone from the SJW camp false flagged one of his videos, and in a twisted sense of irony, him false flagging many other people was the end of his. Since then, Matt attempted to rebrand his channel, even changing his name to Matt Jarbo, which quite coincidentally, another channel by the name Jarbo the Hut gets more subscribers than him on a monthly basis. So yeah. He is uploading videos consistently, but his videos barely get more than a couple thousand views and much deservingly as, at least in my opinion, they're not that great. And he continues to bleed subscribers on a daily basis. Also, I would like to add a personal anecdote to this whole drama that is, well, I actually knew Mundane Matt. During his original rise to fame, when he was originally Foss Flagged, I reached out to him to try to help the dude out because, like I said, I, I believe everyone should have an equal platform to talk. We talked about video production and he actually even gave me some good advice for audio and managing all that stuff. However, the moment he surpassed me in subscribers, he deleted my contact off of Skype. It's easy to see where his motivations lay when the only people to talk to are those who are bigger than him. Our problem with Matt has little to do with the quality of his content, but rather the quality of his character. I could care less about the politics, what he does or does not support. Gamergate has nothing to do with my opinion of mundane Matt. The fact that he false flags people and the fact that YouTube is my main source of income, and the fact that I also don't want to be afraid to talk about a subject because some sad, sad man on the internet might not like what I have to say. Now that's why I think Mundane Matt is one of the worst YouTubers on this list. You know, I figured if we're doing a list of the worst YouTubers, I can't think of a more deserving YouTuber than Tana Mojul. I don't care if she photoshops her <laughs> as big as the moon. I couldn't give a pig's ass about this fake bullshit about Jake Paul and her getting engaged, which did I say is a load of bullshit? She is on the list because of her character and her actions. She has proven time and time again to be a massive compulsive liar so stupidly irresponsible and clearly doesn't think before she does or speaks she is the type of person that never thinks anything through and this has resulted in her being in situations that no one in the right mind would put themselves in like lying and slandering idubs for being a racist and accusing them of assault she claims to have learned from the experience but has she really because then tanacon happened You're never getting in <laughs> Because there's no way to fucking get in. Then she needs to give everybody their money. Yeah. Free fun, free fun, free fun. This shit show couldn't get any worse. Are you guys having fun today? No. <laughs> I just wanted the point where her irresponsibility is highlighted. She went on holiday a week before her convention opened doors. And then as the convention drew closer, what was she doing? While her management team that she handpicked were doing all the work for her convention that was named after her, by the way. She was fucking partying. Yeah, the management team did a horrible job as well. They're at fault too. But the sole fact she didn't chip in 100% into something that she wanted to do tells me that she didn't give a shit. 
didn't even spend a dollar of her own money. Well, she spent hundreds of thousands of her own money. No, she did not a dollar. I hope for her sake that she's refunded the money to everyone that went. Because those clips of her flexing and saying stupid shit like, I'm sorry that I'm rich and you're not, would age so badly. I get that it's all news, but I bring it up because it's so relevant to this day. As an influencer, I think she sets a terrible example on how to be a decent human being. Like in one of her videos, the first thing she says is that she took Adderall. Like, that's an insightful thing to say, okay? Booked in a few hours. Hunter and I just took some Adderall. No, we did not. Oh, can you not say that? No, I didn't take That's her fucking first message to her fans. This 20-year-old with these little girl fans, her first thing she wants you to know about her is that she just took drugs illegally. I just took Adderall. Can I not say that? Does she have any sense of self-respect and pride? The sad thing is that fans of Tana are more brain dead than she is. The fact that there are mini Tana wannabes that inspire to be like her is alarming. Look, despite everything I've said about her, and this may seem outrageous for me to say this right now, but hear me out. I never met her in my life. If I smoked a joint with her, maybe had a few drinks, she's probably a cool person because people can be different off camera. But as I'm looking at what is presented to me, I can't respect how she is and what she has done. And worst of all, out of everything she's done, she has not learned and changed from those experiences. Even if she claims that she has changed, she hasn't changed for the better. I mean, look at her new MTV show. Looks fucking dreadful. Haven't seen it, not gonna start now. Because the thumbnails alone are enough to keep me away. And if you think I'm hating or whatever, I'm not hating. I'm just seeing it for what it is. Onision is regarded as one of the classic YouTubers, beginning his channel all the way back in 2006. However, unlike his peers, including the likes of Shane Dawson, Nigahiga, and James Ralph of Angry Video Game Nerd fame, he doesn't deserve the respect of the wider community. To be fair, this is mostly attributed to his excessive number of controversies and downright abhorrent behavior. Onision runs many YouTube channels, ranging from an advice channel, which is something we'll later learn he should not be giving, a gaming channel which is… eh, bland, to one where he seemingly just reacts to Google Images. Despite his excessive output amassing thousands of uploads, it's more than likely that Greg is known by the community for his long list of drama and controversies. Perhaps one of his earliest controversies is with a video entitled Murder Eaters, where he proceeds to lecture his audience and berate those who eat meat. Many of the comments in the video were considered incredibly offensive at the time, including one relating to religion. What about eating fish? I mean, God put fish on this earth. Okay, stop right there. Listen, chum, if you're gonna respectively argue something that's based on facts, not fiction, you might not want to include God in the mix. Throughout the video, he proceeds to call everybody who's ever even eaten meat a murderer. As expected, the video did not go over well and was deleted a short time after he put it up. It still lives on in the form of re-uploads, however, but I don't think he's actually ever apologized, despite his unwillingness to keep it on his channel. His actions here, however, would be repeated for a very long time, him getting on his high horse related to veganism, religion, or some other controversial issue, and insulting everybody and anybody who disagrees with him. In fact, a lot of his controversies can be traced back to him saying things they probably shouldn't have said, uh, perhaps the worst of which was back in 2016 when a fellow YouTuber and musician, Christina Grimmy, was tragically murdered during an autograph signing. Now, I want to get on record here and state this. Her dying is nothing less than a tragedy. 
being murdered for doing something you love is absolutely awful, and the victims of this tragedy deserve nothing more than the love and support of their respective communities. Even repeating what he's about to say just feels dirty, but I feel like this is needed for context so you understand the type of person we're dealing with. Christina gets shot, and you all prayed for her. One, if your god cared, she would not have been shot, and two, if you prayed, she still died. Wake up. He was called out by the official Grimmy account shortly after posting this, and proceeded to freak out on social media. After finding out that her brother ran the account, he called him a coward, saying that he should be instead mourning Christina instead of calling him names online. This is failing to realize that he just exploited someone's death and time of grieving to insult religion and make fun of a person's actions during their lifetime. This is absolutely awful. There's a time and place to have discussions in a political nature and even talk about religion, but this is not the time. Another example of Onision's drama being caused by his own words would be his accusations against his former friend and fellow YouTuber Shane Dawson, in which Greg took some old jokes from Shane out of context in an effort to defame him. It is, however, widely believed he only did this to advert accusations of a similar actions from him. Because, well, Greg used to have a show where fans would send in photos of themselves for him to give a rating. Plenty of these bodies w belong to well, teenagers, and the people who he is reviewing were below age of consent. Also, it doesn't really help that he made this video. I'm gonna show you images of a 17-year-old girl and an 18-year-old girl, and you can try to figure out what the difference is. Okie dokie, how old is this girl? Think about it. Can you guess? To make matters worse, his current significant other had first met Greg when she was under the age of 18 and he was in his late 20s. Speaking of relationships, Greg has also had his fair share that all crashed and burned, usually ending with him actively using his social media accounts to harass the very people he heavily manipulated and abused. Most of the people who he's had a relationship with Onision often left with more than a little unkind words to leave towards the man, such as his relationship with Canadian musician Shiloh Hawkinson, who had plenty of issues such as memory loss, seizures, and other medical issues that are not relevant. Both instances of memory loss and seizures were both filmed and uploaded by Greg onto none other than his main channel for some baffling reason, often before calling for any sort of medical help leading many to wonder why he was filming her and not seeking help. He later defended this by saying that Shiloh wouldn't have wanted help, which has led to many people to even question the authenticity of these clips. Furthermore, if someone was having a seizure, I don't think they're in a position to deny medical aid, which also leads me to a question which no one has followed up with yet. It doesn't matter if she wouldn't want medical aid, why are you filming and uploading it? When the relationship ended, Greg uploaded a video of Shiloh begging not to be filmed in another one of his most infamous moments, which I won't show here because she asked not to be filmed, and unlike Greg, I'm actually going to respect that. The amount of problems he has had with his long list of exes could go on for an uncomfortable hour, and we've barely even begun to dip our toes into the excessive controversies that have followed behind Onision, but for the sake of sanity and brevity, we need to wrap it up with bewilderment and question whether or not he does this all on purpose. Between him creeping on teens leading me to personally believe he's a hepophile, he's also a manipulator. He tries to use every relationship around him to his own personal gain, no matter who it hurts or who gets thrown away in the process. I can't even go on to the full list of what this guy has done and trust me, there's a lot more. It gets a lot darker and I encourage you to investigate further because of YouTube monetization reasons, but he is probably the worst person on this list. 
On a lighter note, however, his YouTube career has been faltering heavily and his views have dropped to an all time low. And considering he's getting into arguments with people leaving his Patreon over a few bucks, I can finally be happy to know he's getting dethroned a little bit. Uh, one last thing, though, I normally don't advocate for people being removed from a platform, but Onision actively uses every social media he has to abuse and manipulate people. Most of the time, we're talking about minors here who are just unknowing fans. I only hope that YouTube can finally see this and the various other guidelines he has broken repeatedly across all of his accounts, which not only involves the, you know, guidelines, but the copyright system, because he will often claim and remove videos he disagrees with. I only hope that one day we can just boot this guy off so I don't have to share a platform with him. A lot of people have seen these unofficial channels that create fan edited movie trailers, rather they realize it or not. For example, look at this Captain Marvel trailer. It has over 3 million views and an extremely long title to hide the fact that it's not made by Marvel. Within this community, there are also people who re-upload full trailers and lie about what's in them. Like this one about Black Panther, made by movie access trailers, which falsely asserts that the Soul Stone will be in Black Panther. The Soul Stone is not in Black Panther, but they said it anyways just to get more views. Then finally we have people who just upload a compilation of loosely connected content in order to hit that golden 10 minute mark. Taking a look at Avengers 4 Endgame gag reel funny bloopers behind the scenes plus trailer 2019 superhero movie HD, we get not only an obnoxiously long title, but roughly 5 minutes of actual bloopers. And then five minutes of just filler, random interviews that are not even related to Endgame, all to hit that golden 10 minute mark. By the way, you need at least 10 minutes of content to allow mid-roll ads. The big problem with all these content creators is not only the fact that they abuse YouTube's search algorithm, but they steal footage and then spam videos to make it happen. So every time an actual Marvel trailer comes out, channels like Movie Trailers Entertainment are there with their own mock-up like with this one for Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, we should mention that making your own fan trailer is, you know, totally fine. However, this guy is far more insidious. I mean, just look at the title. Spider-Man Far From Home Exclusive Trailer HD 2019 New Superhero Action Movie Concept Edit. Yeah, a concept exclusive trailer? I mean, I know it's marked as a concept trailer, but because of the length of the title, you wouldn't be able to see in your recommendations. All you'd see is Spider-Man Far From Home exclusive trailer. There are so many channels that pretend to be making official movie trailers, but are in actuality just milking runoff views with as little effort as possible. Now, I've personally been a victim to these movie trailer channels. A few years ago, I made a fan-made intro for Spider-Man Homecoming back when the movie was first announced. And these channels, movie trailers, entertainment in particular, stole my video to use for their fake trailers without any kind of credit or permission because credit or permission just doesn't matter to them. And I'm not talking about one or two trailers, like all of the Spider-Man Homecoming fake trailers that he made. All of them used my fan-made intro. So I took down his video and of course he started apologizing through messages and channel comments. Unfortunately, I don't have screenshots of most of these comments, but yeah, don't be these guys. Their content is manipulating people into clickbait with misleading titles and fake thumbnails. Everything that YouTube shouldn't be. As if J Station wasn't bad enough, this person only reinforces the fact that social media is just full of vultures. And there's nobody who brings this sad fact to reality more than NNA Productions, who is your typical run of the mill obnoxious clickbait channel. But he's best known for his videos calling someone who's not even real on FaceTime at 3 a.m. 
but one day he decided to go a step too far for a quick buck like J Station, cashing in on someone else's death. In a now deleted video he did on Etika, he does not come across as sincere whatsoever. All you have to do is literally look at his mannerisms and behavior. From what I'm seeing, that is not the behavior of someone grieving. That is the behavior of someone who is out of touch with reality and just plain obnoxious. If you heard me say the word deleted, yeah, I said that because the obvious happened. He got hate and made a crappy typical YouTube apology video, basically lying through his teeth on why he made the video, when in fact the reality was the intention to bait people to that video at such a sensitive time. There's a lot of nonsense he said in that video that just doesn't make sense whatsoever, like this for example. Somebody watched it fully or I guess they just started hate commenting and if you guys actually care about Etika, you guys would actually donate to him, alright? You heard right, if you don't make a 3am challenge video, he cares more more about the person you're mourning than you. Jesus Christ, who says things like that? And I can't stand people who do this. I'll tell you what I mean. What he's doing is that he cracked on thin ice and is experiencing the wrath of his actions with everyone calling him out for this fuck up and then has the nerve to spin it to no, you're bad people. It's amazing what crap oozes out of people's mouths when trying to get out of a situation they brought on themselves. As long as people like that remain on YouTube or social media, in the words of Pyro Cynical, you can't even die right. We're gonna put all these guys on the same plane because they all do the same thing. No, I don't care about the video spam, and furthermore, making videos that I perceive to be bad is not a reason to be on this list. There has to be something more, something morally bankrupt about what they're doing, and yeah, we have a bit of that here. Stan Lee died roughly 8 months from the start of scripting this. This is a man who meant so much to me and many other people. He helped create the modern American mythology, and now the works that he created are finally mainstream. I mean, seriously, go out to anyone and ask them who Captain America is, and I'm pretty sure you'll get a legit response. When Stan Lee died, WatchMojo made sure to capitalize on this by launching a video titled Top 10 Cameos in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The thumbnail has Stan Lee plastered all over it, and also has nothing to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is Big Hero 6 and I think Spider-Man? The pinned comment reads as follows, even to this day. Can't believe his gone. Rest in peace, Stan Lee. I'm not gonna lie, this is the absolute most shameless I've seen a corporate entity on YouTube be. Even in the realm of corporate capitalism, greed rules all. You don't see companies like Coca-Cola making advertisements saying, Rest in peace, comic book man. Love you long time, Stan Lee. And anyone who cared about the man, his body of works, and how he changed the comic book literature world would have changed a pinned comment. The moment when they got over 70 people complaining about it on day one. This was posted six hours after the guy died. And then on top of that, it's been eight months since the guy died. And it's still like that. Typos and all. I even made a tweet about this, which has several thousand likes that they were added in. And they were made aware of this. They just don't care enough to change it. Because they don't care. It's very fitting that this is the representation of the channel as a whole. Looper is not much better in this regard. They did the same thing, except they weren't 
very transparent about it, which in my opinion makes them a little bit more sneaky. Sure, I understand making a single tribute video, but on the day this guy died, he uploaded three videos. Stan Lee's 10 Greatest Comics, what you may not know about Stan Lee, and ranking every Stan Lee cameo from worst to best. The guy kept making videos about Stan Lee until view traffic for Stan Lee's death started to die down. Basically, he only did it to make as much profit off the guy's death. Spamming three scripted videos roughly 10 to 20 minutes in length in less than a day apart from one another until the views started to die down. This is not a tribute. This isn't what you do when you care about someone's work. This is what happens when a shady corporation wants to manipulate the way you feel to share a video around in Facebook groups because they want to play off of your emotions, the way that you feel about it. When you make a tribute video, you go the extra mile to show your appreciation. You make sure to show a level of understanding of the guy's work, career, and what he stood for. But that's just not here. It's just a bunch of spam for the views. And the fact is, is that it worked. The guy made a quick buck and nothing I say right here is going to change that. And there's nothing I can do about it. Thankfully, Screen Rant actually only made one video on the subject. Wow, the fact that I have to say that is kind of telling for the level we have hit. However, Screen Rant is actually guilty of something that's far more consistent than any of these guys. They mostly do it with just the thumbnails. Their thumbnails are incredibly misleading to what's actually in the video. I mean, look at these ones. These range from, well, annoying and blatantly false advertising to sexually confusing and freaking weird. It's all a serious problem and a symptom of how the YouTube algorithm works right now. No matter what we do, these kinds of channels will exist. But in my opinion, I'd rather believe that we can hold ourselves to a higher standard. I am not the best YouTuber by any means. My editing could use work and honestly, I try my best to script, but I'm not the best writer by any means. I want to get better with every single upload. I do my best to make something that's at least a little bit better from the last video, whether it be in the editing, scripting, audio work, something. I, I try my best to up my game just a little bit more, which is a lot more than what I can say for these guys. Between the rampant plagiarism that happens across all these accounts, the blatant greed displayed, and the lack of any moral compass at all, I have to say that these guys are probably some of the worst YouTubers out there, and I don't feel bad saying that. Well, it looks like you made it to the end of yet another video. I would like to thank some of my top patrons here. Uh, Kyle Garvey at 20, Sperantis at yet yeah, also 20, Luna at $20, Matthew at $50, Tara Workman at $75, and The Mast at $75. All these people are absolutely amazing and they make it so that I can do fun things like hire an extra editor so videos don't come out uh, this late. And they also make it so that I can afford an extra coffee at the end of the month. Thanks to all these guys who helped me out significantly when I announced that I lost my job and I got a huge influx of people donating to my Patreon. And because of them, I'm now in a way better, more stable financial place than I was when, even when I did work. So uh, thank you. If you're looking for more consistent updates, don't be afraid to join my Discord, or simply put, donating on Patreon gives you access to certain videos early, so that's a good one. My next video shall be most devastating accidents that happen at a theme park, so yeah, hopefully that's not late, and um, I hope you guys have a good one. Seriously, no matter the situation or whatever, I really do hope that you guys can turn a bad situation into a good one. And if you're already in a good situation, let's keep that positivity going.